Hello Cloud Gurus and Happy New Year. It's 2020 and we've entered a cyberpunk world of flying cars, robot butlers and electric sheep. Well, maybe not, but we do have a few futuristic updates from Google Cloud for you. In our Quick Byte segment, we'll find out what's new with Compute Engine, Storage, Serverless, Machine Learning and Identity and Access Management. And we'll be taking a closer look at GKE security in our GCP Gems. As always, we'll round off the episode by celebrating our GCP Guru of the Month. So put your hoverboard on standby and let's get to it. First up, here's a candy bag of goodies from all over the GCP spectrum. You can now utilize network bandwidths of up to 100 gigabits per second on VM instances using NVIDIA Tesla T4 or V100 GPUs. Not an update that will apply to many of us, to be fair, but if you're running distributed GPU workloads for some complex scientific research, this upgrade is going to remove one more bottleneck. GCP have made several upgrades to its internal load balancer service, adding HTTPS support, removing the regional restrictions for accessing ILBs, and allowing ILBs to act as a next hop in a static route. And Google has announced a new archive storage class for cloud storage. It's cheapest yet at only four tenths of a cent per gigabyte per month. This class is recommended for long-term storage of data that will be accessed less than once a year, but still provides the same durability and latency as the rest of Google Cloud Storage. Serverless VPC access is now GA. This means you can access private VM resources inside a VPC from serverless products like Cloud Functions and App Engine, even though they run on an entirely separate logical network. AutoML Natural Language is now generally available. This is an addition to Google's AutoML range of products that make it easy for anyone to train custom ML models without needing teams of data scientists and has a range of common machine learning applications like categorizing content and identifying sentiment in large volumes of text. Cloud Dataproc now supports Spark R jobs in beta. Dataproc is GCP's managed Spark cluster service that takes away all of the toil of deploying and managing the Apache, Hadoop and Spark ecosystem of products. The R programming language is becoming very popular for statistical data analysis, and it's also the most popular coding choice amongst pirates. As well as running Spark R jobs, Dataproc will also host the R Studio server IDE for a complete R developer experience. One last compute update, you can now run IBM Power Systems on Google Cloud. This is a pretty big deal. If you're not familiar with IBM Power Systems, they're a completely different processor architecture to the x86 systems that normally run Linux or Windows. Previously, there have been very few choices for virtualizing power systems, let alone running them in the cloud. In fact, Power VMs only came to IBM's own cloud in mid-2019. If you have workloads that need this architecture, speak to your Google sales representative, and more power to you. At Google Next in London, GCP was positioned as the cloud of data security and privacy, and Google have made several new announcements in the field of identity and access management, or IAM. Cloud IAM Conditions is a new service in beta that allows you to configure specific conditions that must be met in order for access to a resource to be granted. These offer additional granularity on top of existing IAM roles and permissions that you have already defined. For example, you can restrict access to resources that contain a certain naming convention or only allow access during a specified window of time. Secret Manager is a brand new service in beta that's going to provide a great off-the-shelf convenience for storing sensitive data securely. Previously, we might have used Cloud KMS for storing just keys, then rolled our own solution for actually storing data like passwords and certificates, maybe using HashiCorp's Vault or some very carefully managed GCS buckets. Now we have a simple way to store sensitive data securely from right inside the GCP console or using the Secret Manager API. And speaking of using KMS, Google have now extended key management with Cloud EKM, or External Key Manager, which lets you protect data at rest in BigQuery and Compute Engine using encryption keys that are stored and managed outside of Google's infrastructure altogether. Cloud EKM supports vendor solutions from Ionic and Fortanix, with further support for Equinix, Fails, and Unbound coming soon. Google have also announced that coming soon for Cloud EKM is a service called Key Access Justifications, providing you with an audit log of every single time an externally managed key is used to encrypt or decrypt data and why. Before we move on, let's take a moment to thank the inventor of Cloud IAM, Will IAM from the Black Eyed Peas. Boom, boom, pow indeed. 
For our GCP gem this month, we're going to take a closer look at security in Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE. Google already maintains a GKE hardening guide, which contains recommendations for restricting network access, using shielded nodes, and various other pointers on role-based access control and pod security policies. And if you're working in an industry that handles sensitive data, you may also be aware of the Center for Internet Security's Kubernetes Benchmark, a complementary set of best practices for Kubernetes security. This contains recommendations for things like secret management, audit logging, and RBAC, but it also covers control plane components, ETCD, control plane configuration, worker nodes, and policies. Now, some of these things just aren't going to apply to you if you're using GKE, because Google's own SREs are worrying about that stuff for you. This puts you in the precarious position of having to pick and choose your own recommendations from the benchmark. But not anymore. Google and the CIS have now worked together to produce the first distribution-specific benchmark, taking all of the relevant parts of the Kubernetes benchmark and combining them with the GKE-specific guidance of the hardening guide to form a single document for you to follow. The guidance is also leveled. Level 1 recommendations are widely applicable and should always be followed. Level 2 recommendations may be specific to a use case, such as a multi-tenant environment. It might sound like a lot of work to implement these extra measures, but believe me, it's worth putting in the effort now instead of scrambling to deal with a potential data breach in the future. Thankfully, you can use the security health analytics tools built into the GCP Security Command Center to run built-in checks against a variety of applicable GCP and GKE benchmarks. Then, you can view any issues with your cluster configurations on the security dashboard right in the GCP console. Congratulations to our Guru of the Month. This month's winner is Supriya Badguja, a senior software engineer from India. Congratulations, Supriya. We'll be sending you a swag pack, including a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. And why don't you see if you've got what it takes to be Guru of the Month? You could get your hands on all of these ACG goodies and be Guru famous. Check out this month's new question at the link below. That's it for this episode of GCP This Month. So here's to a happy new decade, if you choose to believe the decade starts in 2020. And if you think it starts in 2021, please watch this video again in about one year's time. Until next time, keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.